All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house. And today I've got the Booker Kilo Romeo here with me for a review. And as usual, we're gonna analyze the look, the sound and the feel of this guy. But first of all, let's just do a quick size comparison. Uh, this is up against another offering from uh, Booker. This is the Ellipse, a little bit smaller and lighter. And uh, this is another inexpensive option from Kershaw. This is the Asteroid and uh, let's Put it up against uh, the Ultra X uh, uh, Hugger and uh, let's do it up against uh, the Best Tech uh, uh, Spike right over here. Another um, inexpensive solution, we got it here. This is the Kershaw Amplitude, a little bit smaller than that. And let's just do it up against a couple classic, of course. This is the Spyderco Para 3 and Paramilitary 2. All right, so you can see a little bit bigger than that uh, big boy right over there. So not a smaller, a small knife. Guys, this is 7.75 inch long when open, 4.2 inch long handle. Um, it's uh, This is a weird one because it has some very, very nice features, but some pretty ugly one as well. So first of all, it's very inexpensive, like $20, and you, you can get this one home. Um, it's uh, made out of uh, Pekka wood uh, scales right over here, and um, uh, it, it's employing 440 stainless steel for the for the handle. Uh, these are stainless steel bolsters and uh, stainless steel uh, liners. So uh, it's interesting. Um, the chamfering going on, it's okay on the outside, uh, not really that much on the inside. Uh, the fit and finish is, uh, no, that's not very good. Look at this. Look at these gaps going on right over here. Uh, some uh, here is aligned, but it's indented right over there. This is protruding. There's a gap over here. Uh, this is even worse right over there. Look at this. And I mean here, it's not uh, perfect. We, we are not looking for perfection right over here. So uh, on that department, mm, yeah, not, not the best. You have a liner hole going on over here. Just the drill the hole. Uh, there's uh, two standoffs, pretty straightforward uh, construction. And you would assume, yeah, you just uh, remove these guys and you're done, right? Yeah, no. Uh, this is riveted. Um, uh, the bolsters are riveted as well as the standoffs internally. So there's no way you can uh, maintain this guy. And check it out on the inside. They just drilled the hole. They didn't even clean up uh, the internal. Uh, you see, you still see some of the wood just uh, going through the hole right over there. So fit and finish, is, it's, it's not here. So forget about that. Uh, this is a bolster lock and uh, there's surprisingly there is no lock stick which is very good. Um, there's a, a pretty thin liner I would say with a lock up of maybe 40% 50%. Uh, something that I really appreciate is the fact that there's no pocket clip. So it's uh, it has a nice sleek design overall. So it looks good in my opinion. Uh, the clips are uh, the screws, sorry, are uh, not protruding and kind of flush with the uh, with the handles. And um, it's uh, it's an overall nice knife. It's not ambidextrous. It's like uh, one thumb stud right over here only. So you're just gonna deploy it like that or just like this. Uh, so the stock thickness is pretty thick on this one. You have a uh, hollow grind, 40% belly. Uh, this is a, a 3.5 inch long blade. Uh, you got even a sharpening choil, which reveals that this guy is pretty, it's relatively thin behind the edge. It's gonna be a good slicer. I mean, it's pretty thick on the stock over here. So I would have preferred the hollow grind to be a little bit higher, but yeah, they needed space to put the billboarding, right? So that's why they didn't do that. And a little bit also on the back, not too bad. Uh, and then you got uh, this thumb, uh, the thumb stud, 
right over here which is decently designed and you can easily you know deploy the blade like that so not too bad um, also you got these bolsters which are satin finished like right over here you see also like for example a gap so here you, you don't see almost don't see the gap but here you see it big time so there's some uh, inconsistencies uh, throughout uh, the knife uh, the sound this guy makes it's very pleasant I really like this one it's a pleasant sound guys nothing to say when you close it look at this extremely muffled it is very nice it's probably the, the best uh, thing about this one um, so I appreciate this one and it's smooth also that's another thing that I really like this guy is running on Teflon washers and uh, it has a weight of um, uh, 5.7 ounces so not really light in the pocket but there's no hot spot it has a nice grip there's no jimping so it's gonna be very smooth uh, you're not gonna be yeah you can do the the reverse grip but it tends to be a little bit sharp on this side over here overall this is feeling solid there's no flex whatsoever texture is kind of good fit and finish is not good there's gaps misalignments uh, throughout the blade but it feels solid if you wiggle the blade like that not really much of uh, blade play going on over here deployment speed is nice guys this is on teflon washer so the, they nail down the geometry because this is uh, this is a beautiful action i have to say that so um very nice it's smooth it's uh the action is very smooth detent strength is non-existent basically there's no detent um you can't really touch the tip of the blade so it's pretty safe in that department uh the uh lock uh, bar it's pretty easy to disengage because of this cut out you don't have any ball a detent ball ramp you have a hard step right over here which you can easily feel there's no really any free fall or any guillotine effect uh, uh, whatsoever going on but overall i mean it's a very inexpensive knife guys and um, the overall look is decent fit and finish is uh, it's sufficient let's say the sound is very nice i appreciate that and the uh, um, the grip the feeling in the handle is also pretty good so there you have it hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching and stay tuned